Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to go ahead and create our insert method um, so that we can easily insert uh, records into our database um, with our wrapper. So let's just jump right in and let's go back to our DB class here. And after our query method what I want to do is give me a few lines here and I'm going to say public function insert all right, now insert is going to take a couple parameters. First of all, we need to know what table we're going to be inserting a row into. And then the next thing we're going to do is uh, grab our fields and our values. So by default, we're going to set that equal to an empty array. And we are off to the races. So let's go. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set a field string set that equal to an empty string here. And then I'm going to set up another one that I'm going to call value string. Okay. And then I want to also set up values and set that equal to an empty array. And this will make sense in just a moment. So then what we're going to do is we're going to build up this SQL uh, statement. So first things first, we're going to do a for each. So we're going to say for each fields as field value. Okay, so that's this parameter here. So we'll say for each field is field uh, value. And what we're going to do is build up, first of all, our um, field string. Okay, so our field string, it, let's just, um, before I get too far, let's just look at what an uh, SQL insert statement looks like and what that looks like is insert into context and then what we have is you have fields and let's just give a few examples real quick so um, you would have um, something like f name l name and um, these might look like quotes to you, but um, these are actually backticks. And the backtick is right above the tab key, all the way to the left top of the keyboard. So make sure you're using backticks on this field uh, names and not single quotes. If you have any issues, make sure you have a single quotes there. Um, so this is, we'll carry on with that, but that's how that looks. And then, then the way it goes is, is values. And then it gets another set of parens, and what happens here is then these are in single quotes, and so this would look like, you know, Tony, Parham, and Tony, Okay, so that is what our SQL statement is going to look like. So first things first with this field string, we're going to build up this part of the string right here. And we're going to do that inside of our for each loop here. And so what we're going to say is field string, and we're going to concatenate onto that field string inside this loop. Okay. Um, and so the way that it works is first thing that we need is a back tick just one single back tick okay and then what we're going to need if you look right here is the field name so let's just go ahead and say field okay and then we're going to concatenate on another back tick so if you look here's a, a back tick the field name, a back tick, and then a comma. So let's go ahead and add a comma in there. And uh, so that's that, and that um, that will build up that field string as we go through for each value. That's just fine. And then we're going to say a value string as well. Now, value string is going to be just a little bit different because we're going to be binding all of our input, all of our fields here. So what we're going to do is just put a question mark and a comma. And I know that looks kind of weird, but basically what it's going to do is replace all of these with a question mark, 
and then a comma in between them. And then we'll use our bind method um, to actually put these this information into there. So the last thing that we need to do is actually build that, um, those bound parameters up. And so what we'll do is say values is equal to value. Okay, and so what that's going to do in this loop is it's going to take value and it's going to add it to this array. And we'll use that array later with our bind uh, when we run our query. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense. If it doesn't make sense, just take a minute to uh, slow down and read this over again. Now, we need to, do need to do a little bit of cleanup because at the end of this field string, we're going to have an extra uh, comma. And at the end, we're going to have an extra comma at the end of the value string as well. So one, one thing that we can do there just to clean that up really quick is say uh, field string uh, is equal to, and then we're going to do a right trim. And we're going to say uh, field string. And then for our second parameter, we're going to go ahead and um, trim off that last back tick. Okay. And the, we also need to right trim the value string, which is really similar. So let's just go ahead and replace field with a value. And then replace our back tick here with a uh, comma. Okay? And that will trim off the comma. And actually, I am wrong. We need to trim off the comma of both of these, not the back tick. Um, because <laughs> just look at this, we're going to have an extra comma at the end of this, not an extra back tick. Same thing with this one, we're going to have an extra comma. So um, you might be confused as to what's going on here, but let's just go ahead really quickly and dump and die our SQL uh, statement. And um, before we do that though, let's go ahead and plug in all this information. So let's replace this contacts here with um, our table. So let's do that. Um, so insert into table, which will grab this parameter there. And then here we're going to replace all of this with a uh, field string. Okay, and then we're going to replace all these with value string. Okay. Um, and so to make this work, what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and um, build up, let's see, we'll build up this insert. And so the way this is going to look is I'll create um, fields. It's going to be equal to an array. And the way that this works is we're going to say f name. Say Tony. L name, Parham, uh, email. That's the last example I'll give. Um, okay, so we built up this ar this array here, and then to use this, um, we'll just change from this. We're going to get rid of query. Say insert, and we're going to insert. Uh, into our contacts table and we're going to insert those fields. Okay, we're going to use those fields. Alright, so now if I go here and I refresh, uh, what we have here, I'll have to kind of just pull this down so you can see here, but we have a string and it says insert into contacts and then we have our values or our fields, if that looks correct, and then our values are just replaced three of them with question marks. That's absolutely what we want. Um, perfect. Um, that's that's the, that is exactly what we want. So that's looking good. So let's go back here to the DB, and what we need to do now that we know our SQL is looking good is we actually need to go ahead and do it. So um, we'll say if. If not this query, so if not this query, and we'll pass it in our SQL, and then 
the second parameter we're going to pass in values, which if you remember is our array that's been built up with this for each loop. So that'll give us those bound values. And then, so, um, uh, error. So if not this uh, query error, then we're going to return true. Else, we are going to return false. Okay. And there's one problem with this um, testing this right now. Is we don't have this method, so let's just go ahead and create that really quick. That's super easy to um, create, and it's just going to be a getter. So what we're going to do here is say public function uh, error, and we'll return this. So we got this right here, and the reason we're doing that is uh, inside of our query, remember we set that to false at the beginning, and then if it fails, we set that to true. So we're checking with this, um, this error method, we're going to return either true or false. It'll be a Boolean. So what that looks like is here, we're calling that on this query method. So we run the query, and then we kind of chained on another method, and we're saying, let's see, so if this is not false. So basically, is this true or, or is this false? And then if it if it works, there's no error, we're going to return true. And if there is an error, we're going to return false. Okay. That's the insert method. So now all we need to do is test that. So go back to home and let's just make sure everything's okay. That looks good. So let's just go back here and look at our um, at our local host and go to browse. Right now we have one row in here, and it's the one that I manually inserted. So if we've done this correctly, I go back here and refresh. Um, now if I go to here and click Browse again, um, you can see that it did work correctly. This, there's a second row here, and that is um, the information that we had in our, uh, we put in our, our fields array here it inserted those things. So even though we had those question marks and the values, um, the, the actual values here were bound. So let's just take a look at that, make sure it's right, Tony Pond, Tony at sharklasers.com. And what's really cool and neat about this is by binding those values, we avoid SQL injection. So um, little Johnny drop tables, whatever the classic example is of someone, um, you don't have to worry about that if you're using the wrapper. Um, to insert into the database. It will convert all those values into strings even if it's SQL uh, if it's SQL syntax or SQL statement like drop users or something like that. So that will work perfectly and um, I hope that helps and in the next video we're going to continue on with our DB wrapper.